Graphing Radical Functions Part 2. Okay, in this video we're going to focus on the reflections and the vertical stretch or shrink. Reflections happen with negative signs. If you have a negative on the inside of your radical, then it will be a reflection across the y-axis. If you have a negative on the outside of your radical, it will be a reflection across the x-axis. With stretches and shrinks, we're multiplying by a factor outside of our square root. Um, if we multiply by a number that's bigger than 1, like 4, or like 3 halves, then we're going to stretch. If we multiply by a number that's less than 1, like 1 fifth, then we're going to shrink, or you can also call it compress. Okay, here's our first problem, and we're going to use a table of values for each of these to graph. So first of all, we need to think about what numbers we can plug into the square root. So numbers you can plug into the square root are only perfect squares. So we're going to plug in 0, because that's a perfect square, 1, 4, 9, and we could keep going with 16 and 25, but we don't really need that many points. Okay, so if we plug 0 into our function, we get 2 square root 0, square root of 0 is 0, times 2 is 0. And then plugging in 1, we get 2 square root 1, square root of 1 is 1, times 2 we get 2. Plug in 4, we're going to get out 4. Plug in 9, we'll get out 6. Okay, and now we just need to graph our points. So we've got a point at 0, 0, one at 1, 2. See that stretch by a factor of 2 there? And then 4, 4. And it looks like 9, 6 is not going to fit. So there we go. We've stretched our graph. It's now taller and skinnier, and that is a transformation of stretch of 2. The domain and range here, domain is going to be x is greater than 0 because our function is covering all of the x-axis that's greater than 0, I'm sorry, greater than or equal to 0, and our range is going to be y is greater than or equal to 0 as well because all of this part of the y-axis is covered by our function. Okay, here we have the same thing but with a cube root. So with cube roots, we, don't, we want to look at perfect cubes to plug in to our graph, into our function, sorry. So perfect cubes that we're going to use are 0, 1, and 8. We're also going to use negative 1 and negative 8. These are also perfect cubes because you can take a cube root of a negative. So now, if we plug in negative 8 to our function, the cube root of negative 8 is just negative 2, and negative 2 times negative 3 is 6. If we plug in negative 1, the cube root of negative 1 is negative 1, so we get out 3. Plugging in 0, we're going to get out 0. If we plug in 1, we're going to get negative 3, and if we plug in 8, we will get negative 6. Okay, now you need to plot the points. And then last, we need to state our domain and range, which, since this is a cube root function, will be both all real numbers. The transformation that happened here was it was stretched by 3, so you'll notice that it's taller and skinnier now from the parent function, and it was also reflected across the x-axis. So if you notice, this was the parent function, so it's been reflected and made taller and skinnier stretched. Okay, back to a square root here. And now we're going to have to think a little bit more about what numbers to plug in. So on my last square root problem, I plugged in 0, 1, 4, and 9. But I can't plug those numbers in now because I have this plus 1 going on. If I did plug in these numbers, I wouldn't end up with a perfect square on the inside. So what I need to do is I need to think about what plus 1 is equal to 0. Well, that'd be negative 1. So I'm going to plug in negative 1. That will give me 0 on the inside. Then I need to say what plus 1 is 1 to get my next perfect square. Well, that would be 0. Next, I need to say what plus 1 gives me 4. That would be 3. And what plus 1 gives me 9. That's 8. So again, I'm plugging in negative 1, 0, 3, 8 because when I plug them in, it makes this a perfect square. And so I will get out a nice answer. Alright, 
So 1 half square root, so we'll start with plugging in negative 1 plus 1. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. Square root of 0 is 0. 1 half times 0 is also 0. Next one, we'll have 1 half times 0 plus 1. The square root of 0 plus 1 is just going to be 1 times a half. I'll get out a half. Plugging in 3. The square root of 3 plus 1 is 2 times 1 half gives me 1. And then if I plug in 8, the square root of 8 plus 1 is 3 times a half is 3 halves. Okay, now plot your points. Okay, and notice my last point didn't really fit on here. That's fine. For square root functions, as long as you have two points, you're good to go. Cube roots, you need three points on there. All right, and then my domain here. My domain is going to be x is greater than or equal to negative 1, because my graph covers that part of the x-axis. And my range is going to be y is greater than or equal to 0.